feeding relationships. In this lesson, we'll look at the science and engineering practices of developing and using models, constructing explanations and designing solutions, obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. We'll explore the cross-cutting concepts of patterns, cause and effect, systems and system models, and energy and matter. Producers and consumers. Some organisms produce their own food. These are called producers. Plants produce their own food using sunlight. Other organisms cannot make their own food. They are called consumers. Some types of bacteria can also make their own food by using light or chemical reactions. In this image, who is a producer and who is a consumer? Let's look at some examples. A shark. Shark must consume its food. A tiger, the same. Holly is a plant, it must be a producer. A koala eats other plants. A rosebush is a producer. A cedar tree, also a producer. A dandelion, those grow in the spring and I'm pretty confident that they are a type of plant that is a producer. And finally, a consumer being an eagle. Different types of consumers. Consumers can be grouped into different types. Herbivores, these are consumers that eat producers. Carnivores, these are consumers that eat other consumers. And also omnivores, these are consumers that eat other consumers and also producers. We would be an example of omnivores. So let's look at, based on uh, what we've just discovered, can we match a definition of each feeding type? An organism that cannot make its own food. Is that a, con a carnivore, a consumer, an herbivore, an omnivore, or a producer? An organism that only eats other consumers. Is that a carnivore, a consumer, an herbivore, an omnivore, a producer? An organism that produces its own food. An organism that only eats producers. And finally, an organism that eats consumers and producers. Carnivore is an organism that only eats other consumers. A consumer is an organism that cannot make its own food. An herbivore is an organism that only eats producers. An omnivore is an organism that eats consumers and producers. And finally, a producer is an organism that produces its own food. Food chains. A food chain is a sequence that describes the feeding relationships in a group of organisms. So a simple food chain being shown in this image is the grass into the cow. And you might even choose to include the solar energy coming in and the grass is using that solar energy to go through photosynthesis. So you might even supply energy at the beginning of this food chain. All right, looking at this. What does our food chain look like in this habitat? Well, I see a number of heads of lettuce. On them, there is some type of caterpillar. Uh, the blackbird appears to be eyeing those caterpillars pretty good, as if maybe it wants to eat them. And uh, the little fox, I think, is maybe waiting patiently for the blackbird to make its way around to its side of the garden. So what does a food chain show? A leaf is eaten by a caterpillar, which is then eaten by a, a bird. And then that bird could even be eaten by the fox. 
In a food chain, each arrow means is eaten by, or the energy flows to. Producers, herbivores, or carnivores. Food chains always start with a producer. We can tell if an organism is a producer, an herbivore, or a carnivore by looking at its position in a food chain. So using the, the words producer, herbivore, and carnivore, we can say we have an organism that makes its own food. The leaf of the lettuce is a producer. The snail is going to consume the lettuce, and so therefore it is an herbivore. And then we've got a couple of different carnivores. We've got the bird that's going to eat the snail and the owl that's going to eat the bird. So there are multiple um, carnivores in this particular food chain. So let's name the feeding type in another example. We've got seaweed or potentially probably more of a kelp here. We've got a limpet and crab. And we need to know which of them is a carnivore. The crab is going to be the one that is going to consume another consumer. Our kelp or seaweed is going to be the producer here. It's going to go through photosynthesis to make glucose. And then the limpet is going to be the herbivore that is eating that kelp or seaweed. So consider the following activity. Draw your own food chains based on these guidelines. Have a food chain from a forest habitat. Or a food chain from an ocean habitat. Make sure to include only four organisms in it. And then add yourself as the end of this particular food chain. Antarctic food chains. We're going to look at some information about what species uh, exist in the Arctic. And we're going to construct a food chain that shows the feeding relationships in this habitat. Orcas. They are also known as killer whales. They range around Antarctica, are hunting for their food. One of the species that are eaten by orcas are the Weddell seal. Weddell seals are large mammals that stay in Antarctica all year around. One of the many organisms that Weddell seals eat is the squid. Squid are very fast hunters. They often poison their prey before consuming them. They also feed on many different organisms, including shrimp. Shrimp are small animals that live in the ocean, specifically near to the ocean floor. There are over 2,000 different species of them. They are omnivores, but phytoplankton make up the vast majority of their diet. So let's look at all of those examples and build our food chain. Well, we know phytoplankton are starting this ecosystem by going through photosynthesis. And then we said shrimp were going to consume that phytoplankton, even though they may eat a variety of other things, the majority of their time is spent eating phytoplankton. Squid are going to eat shrimp. The Weddell seal is going to eat the squid and orca are going to eat the seal. Animals usually eat many different things and are involved in lots of different food chains. Because of this, we use a food web to identify those relationships. Food chains often look similar to what we see here. Plants eat uh, are eaten by aphids, and aphids are eaten by ladybugs. 
And ladybugs are eaten by chickadees, and chickadees are eaten by owls. However, plants may be eaten by a moth. And a moth then may be eaten by a chickadee, and again, a chickadee is eaten by an owl. Or plants may be eaten by a mouse, and then a mouse eaten by a weasel. Or plants are eaten by a mouse, and that same mouse might get eaten by an owl. We can start to see there's some complexity here. These food chains can be put together into a food web, which shows how the food chains are connected. Reliance on only one source of food would make an organism vulnerable to variations in the availability of this food. Also, many food sources are not available all year round, so alternative sources of nutrition are needed. So what would a food web for these food chains look like? We've kind of gotten a little bit of a preview to that. The mouse is going to eat the plant, and the mouse can be eaten by the weasel, whereas the plant may, be get, may get eaten by the moth and then eaten by the chickadee, or the plant and the aphid and the ladybug are all um, dependent upon each other. What we see here is each of the different colorations are showing those um, food chains from the previous slide. So let's name the producer in this food web. Let's name two herbivores in this food web. Let's name two species that are top carnivores. How many secondary consumers do you see here? And which food chains include the moth? Starting with question one. The daisy or flower, uh, flowering plant, that would be an example of a producer. Number two, the vole and the aphid. Number three, the stoat and the barn owl. Both of those would be examples of two species that are top carnivores. Stoat is another name for the weasel. For number four, there are four secondary consumers, the ladybird, the spider, the stoat, and the blue tit. And number five, the daisy, the moth, the blue tit, the barn owl, and the daisy, the moth, the spider, the goldfinch, and the barn owl. So looking at each of these food chains, we are going to attempt at building our own food web. Notice we have algae, mussels, starfish, algae, barnacle, seagull, algae, mussel, whelk, crab, and seagull. And finally, algae, limpet, whelk, crab, and seagull. So let's start and see if we can put this together. Well, we definitely noticed the algae started each of those. So our producer is the algae. And now we need to know where to go to next. Well, I'm noticing that I've got muscle, barnacle, muscle, and limpet in the next one. So I can build all of these food chains off of that. And maybe what we need to do is just put them in the appropriate place and work from there. So my first one, algae mussel starfish. I've got my algae. I've got my mussel. And I'm wondering, does my starfish go all the way up here? I'm thinking probably not. So probably I should put my starfish here and I could, should swap my mussel for over here. 
algae mussel starfish. All right, let's go back again. Now I've got algae barnacle seagull. Well, that one seems like that fits a little bit better over here. Algae, barnacle, and then my seagull is the top of the food chain, right? And so now I can kind of put together my crab and my limpet in here. So the only question I have is, does a mussel get eaten by a limpet? So let's go back and let's see if we've got a mussel getting eaten by a limpet anywhere. Doesn't appear that I have a mussel being eaten by a limpet. Well, let's see if we got it correct. Hey, we are correct. All right, moving on. Why are producers first in food chains? Why do you think producers are the first step in every food chain? This is because they make their own food. To do this, they use the energy from the sun, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and water from the soil. This process is called photosynthesis. The food made by photosynthesis is used by every other organism in the food chain. Biomass transfer. Photosynthesis involves an energy transfer. Light energy from the sun is transferred into chemical energy, which is stored in the body of the producer as food. Specifically, the food that it is stored at is, is glucose. Food is made up of matter. Food can be broken down to release the energy stored in it. It can also be used to build the living tissues inside organisms. Transfer of matter and energy. When a producer is eaten by a consumer, the matter and energy it contains are transferred to the consumer. The transferred matter and energy becomes available for the consumer to use. Matter and energy is transferred again if the consumer is eaten by another consumer. Waste matter. Some of the matter and energy in food chains is lost to the environment as waste. All organisms release waste matter throughout their lives. Organisms release waste as solids, liquids, and gases. The waste matter and the energy stored in it is released into the environment. Waste and dead matter. This diagram shows what happens to the energy in the food consumed by a cow. So the food comes in, 30% of that energy is lost as heat. 60% is lost in urine and feces. This leaves only 10% of the energy that is consumed being used for growth. Food chains involving dead matter. Some organisms eat dead matter, or waste matter produced by other organisms. These organisms are known as decomposers. Wood lice eat dead leaves. Wood lice are a source of food for frogs. So using this information, we could create a food chain showing the decomposition of leaves being eaten by food lice, and then the food lice being eaten by frogs. The role of decomposers. Some types of decomposers, such as fungi, they digest dead matter outside their bodies. This process releases a variety of nutrients into the soil or into the water for aquatic ecosystems. The nutrients can be taken up by producers then. Decomposers allow matter and nutrients to be recycled within an ecosystem. This is extremely important as nutrients can then be resupplied to producers as they are going through the process of photosynthesis and making glucose.